Dubesar, you can please unmute and introduce Ashwini sir. Okay. So, uh, good evening, friends. It's a pleasure to be back this evening with the indoor study cycle. And our speaker this evening is Professor Ashwini Kumar. Uh, many people in the study circle, the Smuti study circle, would be knowing him because uh, he is widely talked about. He has given number of talks. Uh, recently, he had organized a, a seminar in the university where he is working in Canada. And uh, Professor Kumar is going to talk to us on his own journey with Kismuthi's existential inquiry at a personal level and in the context of his academic life. For those who may not know Professor Kumar very well, I'll briefly introduce him to you. Dr. Ashini Kumar is an associate professor of education at Mount St. Vincent University, Canada. He is the author of two scholarly books, Curriculum as Meditative Inquiry, which was published in 2013 by Palgrave Macmillan, and Curriculum in International Contexts, Understanding Colonial, Ideological, and Neoliberal Influences. This was also published by Paul Gray Macmillan in 2019. He is also the editor of Engaging with Meditative Inquiry in Teaching, Learning, and Research, Realizing Transformative Potentials in Diverse Contexts. This was published by Rutledge in 2022. He has served as the President of Arts, Researchers, and Teachers Society Canada, his book, Curriculum as Meditative Inquiry, was chosen and as an outstanding academic title by Choice Reviews, American Library Association, in 2015. His co-authored paper, Teaching as Meditative Inquiry, a dialogical exploration, which describes his pedagogical philosophy and practice, received the outstanding publication in Curriculum Studies Award from the Canadian Association for Curriculum Studies in 2019. He is the recipient of the Mount St. Vincent University President and Vice President Advanced Career Teaching Award in 2022 and University of British Columbia's Faculty of Education's Alumni Educator of the Year Award 2022. He has a I mean, multifaceted personality. He, he plays the harmonium and sings and composed Indian classical music. His current project focuses on researching the theory and pedagogy of Indian classical music and their significance for culturally responsive education in Canada. If somebody wants to know more about him, uh, one can see his website and also the YouTube channel. With these words, I want to extend a very warm welcome to Professor Shani Kumar. And also want to thank him on behalf of uh, Indoor Krishmuti Study Circle that he could accept our request and is being with us today uh, for this session. So, sir, you can you can begin your lecture and you can talk to maybe 50 to 50 minutes to an hour, after which we'll open the session for question and answer or comments or whatever. So it's your turn now. Please unmute yourself and you can begin now. Thank you so much, uh, Dubeji. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. And thank you to Harshad Parikji for recommending my name to, uh, to, to, the, to the Indoor group. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's really a pleasure to be here to see so many folks uh, interested in the work of Krishnamurti. And Krishnamurti has uh, inspired and influenced me quite deeply in, in so many ways about which I will share with you in this talk today. Um, so that's the focus of the talk, my journey with Krishnamurti. I, I, because you all have read Krishnamurti uh, quite seriously, I'm sure. So you, you are very aware of what Krishnamurti talks about or, and what his key emphasis are. So uh, rather than giving a talk on Krishnamurti, I would uh, share my journey with Krishnamurti and what I have learned from him. And, um, and then maybe we can engage in a, in a conversation with each other. So uh, for, uh, for a while now, all of my classes, when I teach in my classes and when I 
uh, conduct uh, seminars and talks, I begin them with a relaxation exercise. Would it be okay if we begin with that? Would everybody be fine with that? Yes, sir. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So I invite you to close your eyes if you can, or you can look down. Have your feet firmly on the ground. Your back straight. Shoulders relaxed. See if you can connect with your breath a little bit. Just paying attention to it. Let your body be restful. And just get in touch with your breath. Now bring your attention to your thoughts. And just observe and see what's happening there without trying to push anything away or control it. Just observing what's happening in the mind for a few moments. Now bring your attention to your heart. And notice any feelings that you may have at this moment. Again, without pushing them aside, just observing, just noticing, acknowledging. Please take a few deep breaths. And join us when you are ready. So thank you again, everyone, for having me here. And as I mentioned before uh, this exercise, that I will be speaking uh, about my uh, personal and professional journey with the work of Krishnamurti. So I will be speaking autobiographically. 
and uh, i'm i'm not going to be reading a paper uh, to you but i have few points to to help me guide so that i'm i'm uh, staying on the path and uh, i'm able to share whatever i want to share with you first uh, uh, in the very beginning i would like to share with you how i came across krishna murthy and with my with, with what mindset i am as you can uh, see i'm not that old so i haven't met krishna murthy in person um, i i came to know of krishna murthy through the writings of osho and as you know um, uh, which is not only true for me but it's true for many many people uh, a lot of people uh, especially those people who read in hindi or who speak hindi uh, primarily heard of krishna murti through osho because krishna murti's work uh, began to be translated in hindi a little bit later not right away so a lot of people in the in in the hindi speaking regions uh, came to hear of krishna murti from the from the work of osho so i'm going to be uh, telling you a little bit uh, what i discovered in osho's work and how i got connected to krishna murti through that Uh, but just a little uh, uh, background from my youth and childhood uh, i when i reflect back of course you don't know who you are and how you are in the childhood but through reflection through autobiographical reflection i could see that as a teenager uh, i was quite interested in uh, in spiritual inquiry in in understanding in and and i would say the spiritual inquiry was more about uh, critiquing the orthodoxies and superstitions that i saw around me and the greatest help in that exploration came from the work of kabir which you all know when i when i'm speaking to uh, uh, western audience i have to explain about kabir and who kabir was so luckily i don't have to do that but kabir uh, had a uh, quite a deep impact on me when i was growing up and i was uh, you know quite uh, taken by without even uh, fully understanding that how radical and critical was kabir as a poet and a philosopher and as a thinker who was trying to uh, awaken both the hindus and muslims uh, of the uh, to to the orthodoxies that pervaded the society at that time it was largely a hindu nation but a muslim uh, rule and uh, i think kabir uh was very brave and radical in the way he tried to show to the people that uh, the real spiritual inquiry the real meditative inquiry is not in is not uh pursuing a particular path and 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 doing the rituals mechanically and without your full uh, without your full Uh, involvement in what you are doing just doing because you have been conditioned to do so and it's very clear that is so connected to krishna murti's work at another place i have talked about how uh, krishna murti's and and kabir's thoughts are so connected with each other although they are so uh, miles apart uh, so, so kabir's work laid the foundation of a Uh, a deeper critical inquiry he kind of opened my mind as a teenager to ask questions and not to accept the things as they are and not to uh, follow the family traditions or ceremonies and rituals as they are but actually ask them questions so you can see i was uh, quite a pain in the neck of uh, of of people around me um, uh, because of uh, my a uh, desire to ask questions and my family i would say quite uh, uh, was quite respectful to 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 a great extent and let me be the way i wanted to be <clears throat> in my uh, the early 20s when when uh, or just before that when i started uh, my, my university at kirodimal college uh, in in their geography program i was at my sister's house and i heard my uh, brother in law my jija ji hearing a tape of osho on bhagavad gita and that piqued my interest okay who is this guy and uh, who, who who can talk with so much authority and clarity and uh, there is so much poetry in it um, uh, so, so many insights as in 
as a like a, a teenager 18 19 20 year old person to me that was quite uh, quite powerful without understanding who this person is what his background is what he's talking about and uh, uh j- just a coincidence a friend of mine very close friend of mine uh, anurag balyan uh, who uh, have been reading who has been reading krishna murthy's work gave a book of osho to me and the title of the book was dhyan sutra uh, in english we can say principles of meditation i'm not sure if you are familiar with that uh, book or not um, but the primary focus of that book which i understood at that time was to be aware to to deepen one's awareness of the mechanisms of the body the mechanicalness as well as the intelligence of the body to develop the intelligence uh, of the mind to understand the mind how thoughts operates uh, where they come from uh, their contradictory nature their fragmentation and uh, similarly about feelings what are the roots of the feelings uh, how feelings begin within you uh, and and how they impact your day to day action actions so i would say uh, that book i i uh, quite seriously experimented with that book and uh, uh, from quite early on whenever i read a book or whenever i engage with anything i engage with my whole being it was not partial that maybe i'll just do a little bit or maybe i just uh, just just skim it through or just touch upon it i went all in and i i quite deeply experimented that with that book and i would say that th- that quite laid the foundation for me for a number of things including realizing the significance of uh living a life of existential awareness not just intellectual analysis and krishnamurti talks about it very clearly not just intellectually thinking about awareness but actually experimenting with awareness in one's day to day life as one is uh living and interacting with other people so uh th- then on i read uh, quite a few books by osho uh, first in hindi because i grew up in a hindi speaking family i went to a hindi speaking school i started uh, learning english properly i had uh, it as one subject in my um, throughout my school education but i started uh learning it more seriously and with convection when i went to uh, the university so and, and i was uh, the, the uh, t- taking it very passionately that i need to learn english i need to understand english i need because uh, the world is uh, i i felt kind of uh, is uh, after the colonialism and british rule around the world is quite uh, interested in english although at time i was not that critical of english i thought because this this is the only way i can uh, make my space in society i'm very critical of it uh, now since i have understood that how uh, colonialism and the and, and and the rise of a uh, uh, british empire marginalized other languages and cultures around the world and in india it's very clear that how hindi and other languages have been uh quite suppressed because of the um uh, market uh, influence of english and its prominence somehow being educational and educated is uh, linked to the one's ability to speak in the english whether there is any depth or it, in it or not whether there are any insights uh, in it or not so uh, th- that uh, little footnote to tell you that i uh, primarily read uh, osho in hindi for quite a while and then i switched to english and i read many many books and experimented with many many uh, forms of meditation and through that i discovered a few things that i would like to share with you number 1 that the most significant thing in one's life is to understand oneself if one is not interesting in understanding oneself everything else is a waste there is no uh, point in living a life which is not rooted in self understanding second the door to self understanding is meditation so if anybody is interested in uh, self understanding it's a uh, paramount that they become interested in meditation and what is meditation the core of meditation and the soul of meditation is awareness 
is paying attention to one's body, mind, and thought as one is living in uh, one's life. Uh, and as Krishnamurti calls it, without choice, without discrimination, without judgment, to living an intensely uh, aware life, but without, but this, but not using awareness as a way to suppress what thing, what one is thinking and feeling and acting, but actually observing it and through that observation learning more about it another thing that i learned that throughout human history there have been many many insightful people and this uh, this uh, how should i say this area or this quest for self exploration is quite old it's very ancient and a lot of people throughout the world uh, depending on their circumstances, depending on their uh, uh, th th their context, their environment, and their own intensity of uh, self exploration, have contributed quite seriously to this domain of self understanding and self exploration. So, uh, like the, the example that I gave of Kabir and Nanak and so many other people, those who thought that spirituality and self-exploration is central to life have contributed a lot to our understanding, including Krishnamurti. I see Krishnamurti is in the chain of uh, this ever-flowing river where people have come and contributed uh, to this river of self-exploration, self-understanding. Uh, the next point that I learned uh, uh, from my readings and from my exploration was that while you can learn from others, you can engage with others, you can engage in dialogical engagement with others. The only true door to understanding is self-experimentation and inquiry. Nobody else can give you the truth. You can only discover, you can only understand about yourself through self-inquiry and through experimentation. Even when you read something, even when you experiment with, uh, the, with, with something, the real understanding is always going to come to you from your own exploration and not from somebody else. And I, I think Krishnamurti emphasized that point quite clearly. And the last point, you can only understand truth. You can only understand yourself if you are brutally honest and authentic with yourself. So if you uh, play games with yourself, if you trick yourself, if you convince yourself uh, to have understood something, to have known something without actually truly have gone through that, then the, 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 the seeds of inquiry or the seeds of true exploration cannot take place. So one has to be brutally honest and authentic with oneself. And as I uh, mentioned that when I was reading Krishnamurti, uh, when I was, sorry, when I was reading Osho, I would often see him refer uh, Krishnamurti's name at many, many places. Uh, but, and not just Krishnamurti, uh, Gurjiev's name, Kabir's name, Nanak's name. Uh, and I, 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 I was always interested in uh, uh, understanding the work of Krishnamurti because primarily whenever uh, uh, in many, many instances, Osho mentioned about Krishnamurti, he mentioned it in the context of awareness, that Krishnamurti's primary focus, the Krishnamurti's primary teachings is to be uh, uh, fully, deeply, choicelessly aware of who we are as human beings. I picked a Krishnamurti up in my early 20s. I couldn't follow him, what he was saying, so I put him down. In, in uh, when I was, uh, I would say around 24, 25 years old, I went to uh, uh, Central Institute of Education to pursue my bachelor's in education. And at that time, uh, I uh, realized that Krishnamurti was being referred to in a number of courses in philosophy of education courses, in a course I attended called Peace Education, Krishnamurti's name was mentioned. And I said, wow, that's very interesting because, uh, and the another thing that I recognized before um, uh, the being in the discipline of education, I was in the uh, discipline of geography. 
and geography although can have very meditative and spiritual quality as we see when we read krishnamurti and his description of nature it's a very uh, meditative kind of a, a geographical uh, spiritual understanding but uh, the, the way geography was being taught the way we, it was being engaged it was quite uh, uh, it doesn't have that spiritual quality uh, that spiritual flame so when i came to the field of education i was very surprised because for the first time i saw that there are people who are critiquing the education system the mechanistic uh, mechanistic and instrumental uh, nature of the education system and also uh, highlighting the importance of uh, self understanding although not to the extent they weren't doing it to the extent to the extent i wanted the primary focus was critique and criticism uh, but the good thing was that people were open to talk about krishnamurti and that i found very heartening and uh, there were a lot of books uh, by krishnamurti in uh, in in the library of the central institute of education and i read krishnamurti quite seriously at that time um, education and the significance of life freedom from the known first and the last freedom and my most favorite uh, uh, aspect that i loved in krishnamurti's writing was his dialogue with david bohm that touched me a lot and still uh, continue to be uh, uh, some of the best literatures that i have read in my life so because i saw that there is an openness to krishnamurti's uh, ideas in in the central institute of education i started asking folks a lot of questions there students professor that why don't we discuss krishnamurti in a much more elaborate manner and not only krishnamurti i i think that's also the impact of colonial uh, european colonialism that we marginalized all the perspective that exist within our own culture uh, the, 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 of course krishnamurti is a unique case because he defies all cultures but uh, there there was rabindranath tagore uh there is gandhi so many other people have talked about education as a more holistic enterprise than as a, uh as a way to get a career and what i noticed was that those uh ideas from the, oh, those holistic perspectives on education were not being discussed it was primarily focused on a a, a, a field called critical pedagogy and for those of you who may not have heard of this term a uh, critical pedagogy is basically uh, a a way of educating where you make aware uh, where, where you make your students aware of the injustices the discriminations the problems and the operations of the society and i started voicing my concern that uh, because you know the most of the people when i asked them why krishna murthy is not fully present in the discourse the response that was given to me was that because krishna murthy doesn't talk about social injustice because krishna murthy doesn't talk about poverty because krishna murthy doesn't talk about discrimination and i said wow the, 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 you like your argument is completely ill founded if you read krishna murthy carefully that's his primary concern that there is conflict in the society there is oppression in the society there is exploitation in the society and there is a and that exploitation conflict chaos is connected to how we think and live as human beings and unless there is a fundamental transformation within ourselves we cannot transform the social structures so uh, changing the social structure has to be uh, accompanied by in, in, in even preceded by changing in your own consciousness that was very hard sell and the reason for that was because i don't think people read krishna murthy very seriously they thought that krishna murthy was elitist uh, that krishna murthy was the uh, teachers of the rich people uh, who are well fed and that's why his schools catered to rich people so i saw the point in that it's not that i completely denied that but what i also realized that they are missing the point they are not seeing what the krishna murthy's work is all about so i kept having my discussion uh, uh, in in my master's thesis when i was going to write my master's thesis i said i am going to write my master's thesis on krishna murthy but i was told 
because you work on if because you are a social studies teacher maybe you should write a, a thesis on a social studies and maybe you should write on the theory and philosophy of henry giroux who is a uh, american uh, educator who works in canada now uh, and i i was like quite surprised and i said no i'm not going to do that because i am interested in krishnamurti's work so what i ended up doing was uh, integrating krishnamurti's insight with critical pedagogy critical pedagogy being concerned about changes in the outer structures of the society and krishnamurti uh, being interested in the uh, inner structures of human beings and how those inner st structures sustain and produce the outer structures uh, i ended up doing a thesis and i think it was uh, well appreciated by people who understood that there is a need there is a uh, uh, high need and high importance of bringing uh, self inquiry self understanding in the domain of education and you know the other reason why a lot of people become concerned with the idea of self inquiry is because of uh the rise of conservatism in india and other people where education where uh, where religion was used as a vehicle for education and a lot of people became concerned with uh the religious education in the in the traditional sense of the term where an organized religion control the education so but i i think it is it was still very important for me to highlight that religious education in the sense of krishnamurti and religious education in the sense of propaganda and uh, and conditioning are two very different things uh, those who in, those who are in krishnamurti circle of course understands these distinctions very clearly but the folks those who are not in krishnamurti circle uh, i i think these distinctions made to be clear and and i try to do that after finishing my uh, uh, masters of education a uh, number of my teachers uh, encouraged me to pursue my phd abroad because the field of education as a discipline uh, is not still unfortunately not very well developed in india so uh, i came to uh, university of british columbia in 2007 to do my doctorate in education and in the beginning uh, when when i began my program i was convinced that i will continue to uh, integrate uh, krishna murthy's uh, work with uh, critical pedagogy that i will continue to do what i did in my uh, masters work and just continue to expand up upon it but uh, excuse me but when i went through the course work i realized number of things number 1 there was a lot of emphasis on a uh, western philo western uh, educators so i clearly noticed that that the way they were educating not much emphasis was paid to the thinking about education that existed in other part of the world and now we have a term that we used to call this phenomena it's eurocentrism prioritizing your own knowledge your own understanding the other thing that i noted was that a lot of emphasis was given to thought philosophical intellectual thought and cultivating philosophical and intellectual thought but without paying any attention to the thought itself to the movement of existential thought within ourselves the feelings the memories the experiences the images that goes on within ourselves there, there was hardly any emphasis on it although there were uh, perspectives like phenomenology psychoanalysis existentialism uh, educators like duane hubner uh, james macdonald ted oki who were kind of hinting in that area but still it was primarily uh, it, it was primarily a thought centered or a intellectually uh, uh, intellectually committed education rather than a holistic education where the whole being is involved although there are people like jack miller and other educators who talk about it but it, it was marginal 
on the very margins and in the beginning i was quite engaged i used to uh, have a lot of discussion with people about it so my phd time was very Im immensely fruitful to me i had uh, intense discussion with what was going on and what was missing and the other thing the, the the one of the significant thing that happened for me because when i was in india you know traveling the, the, in indian cities is is quite problematic in delhi i was a school teacher going from the home to school uh, then uh, school to i was pursuing my part time masters of education to the university by the time i would come home it would be uh, a quite late and that's the kind of life i lived for a while very busy very intense very little space for yourself but when i came to do a phd uh, luckily i had a scholarship so i was lucky uh, in that regard i had time for the first time i felt that wow i have time and space and those of you know about uh, university of british columbia it's located in vancouver and british columbia is one of the most beautiful places on earth uh, there are so many beautiful places around the world including uh, amazing amazing places in india but i really loved being uh, on the vancouver campus and here what i was reading in krishnamurti's work about observing nature about listening to nature uh, began to flower very naturally because you're surrounded by nature you're surrounded by oceans you're surrounded by uh, the mountains and so the 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 reading of krishna murti was never intellectual for me it, it, even from the beginning but became much more uh, driven by what i was seeing in the nature the the patterns on the leaves uh, on flowers the colors of the sky it be, it became quite uh, prominent for me to to see there there is uh, something called a zen japanese garden in 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 at the university of british columbia where i would go and spend hours and hours so there was an inner inquiry going on in relation to krishna murti's work and outwardly i was quite uh, intensely engaging with my colleagues about the the, the significance of um, uh, krishna murti's work and and that it's a problem that it is not being talked about and discussed at length in in the in 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 a phd program or even in a masters or undergraduate program but i couldn't blame them because in india that is absent so how can i expect uh, uh canadians to kind of pay attention to that kind of a discourse although the discussion was happening and the intense dialogue was happening i was also feeling that i'm not able to fully convey what i want to convey because there is not a like a proper space so in one of my courses uh professors uh, our professor gave us a choice that pick any text that you want to present on and i said wow that's great i picked a dialogue between krishna murti and david bohm uh, uh, th those of you who are aware of the book uh, the future of humanity i, I think it has uh, maybe two or three dialogues perhaps two i gave the dialogues in advance of the class and links to the youtube video to my professor and to all the students all the all of my classmates they read it prior to the class and then in the class we had an intense discussion like first time i got two and a half hour to talk about krishna murti and and to respond to the questions from my classmates and the professor and that was an amazing experience because that experience made me very clear that my passion lies here my passion lies in exploring my own self and exploring krishna murti's work and engaging with people about that work so not just limiting it to myself because prior to that uh, education uh, exploration meditation primarily spiritual inquiry meant to me that it is for myself but then it changed it it changed in the sense that i thought that i need to integrate the personal and the academic 
personal and the professional. And you know, I remember when uh, uh, at one point a psychiatrist came to Krishnamurti and said, you know, I'm completely fed up with psychiatry. I just want to leave psychiatry. I, I want to do something completely different. And Krishnamurti said, no, no, don't leave psychiatry. Go change it. Because if everybody leaves it, everything, then uh, who is going to do any real work that needs to be done in those contexts? So uh, that idea of escaping the situation or escaping, uh, escaping the context never uh, became important to me. Sannyas never became a thing of escaping from the world, but it became as a way to be in the world and engaging with the world uh, with as much passion and, and intensity as possible. So I continued with my uh, academic journey and, uh, and created uh, a dissertation called Understanding Meditative as Curriculum Inquiry, wherein I drew upon Krishnamurti's insight and the insights uh, from a, a US educator called James McDonald, who um, very surprisingly is, is quite closely, there are quite, uh, quite a few close parallels between him and Krishnamurti, including their emphasis on self-understanding and transformation in consciousness as the way to bringing about transformation uh, in the structures. So in my, uh, in my doctoral thesis, I basically explored four principles uh, four, and I said that these are the four principles of uh, curriculum as meditative inquiry and you will see it's quite rooted in Krishnamurti's work. The first principle was uh, that human consciousness is in conflict, that there is a tremendous crisis going on inward and outward and there is no denial to this fact. We can't deny this fact. Second uh, principle was that educational systems around the world are a reflection of this crisis. So what is happening in the domain of education is not independent of what's happening in human society and human psyche. Education is reflecting it and perpetuating it, this crisis. And the third principle was that if we want to understand this crisis, if we want to transform this crisis, then we need to grapple with it. We need to meditatively inquire into it uh, as an existential process, not just intellectually analyzing the problem because the, the, the uh, Western tradition is very apt at it, analyzing the problem, intellectually analyzing the problem. And I would say they, are, they, are, they, they have done quite well in that area. But that alone doesn't solve the problem. We have seen it very clearly. You can learn everything about climate crisis, everything about nature that still doesn't solve a thing because we haven't got the relationship with the nature that Krishnamurti says, right? So bringing in the meditative inquiry aspects in exploration of uh, social, political, economic, personal, and educational problem. And the last <laughs> principle was that if we want to uh, see education as a, an instrument of change in society, then we must create space for meditative inquiry in educational context. That is, education must prioritize, not just have one of its components, but centralize, prioritize study of consciousness as central to its role, to its, to its activity. My dissertation was very well received. I uh, converted uh, the dissertation um, into uh, a book called Curriculum as Meditative Inquiry. Uh, Professor Minakshi Thapan, who all of you know, uh, wrote a, a wonderful uh, forward to this book, to which I'm very grateful. When I was uh, doing my PhD, towards, uh, to, towards the end of my PhD, uh, there was a professor, uh, her name was Professor Karen Meyer. Actually, I, I, I want to mention that although not many people uh, uh, had read Krishnamurti very closely, 
I was very lucky to find this professor who has read Krishnamurti very closely and really um, uh, considered his work to be very important. So she was part of my committee member. And uh, when I was close to finish my PhD, she sent me a poster of a talk by someone called Ashutosh Kalsi uh, at Simon Fraser University. That's another university in Vancouver. And uh, I said, wow, that's a great thing that the, somebody is uh, doing a talk on Krishnamurti. I must go and, and attend the talk. I attended the talk and through that talk, I thought, wow, this is great. This person also is so interested in Krishnamurti. Ashutosh thesis, Ashutosh's thesis explored uh, the connection between Krishnamurti's and excuse me, Frederick Nietzsche's work. And I, and I heard his talk. I liked everything that was that he was saying. And I said, okay, we should meet uh, at some point. Um, so I went to uh, see Ashutosh. Uh, and when, when I met Ashutosh, I think it, I, I really want to highlight this point uh, because it, it, it kind of a, uh, was a uh, new phase in my personal journey. So when I met Ashutosh, you know, when I was in India, I was, uh, I was getting quite detected because of the corruption in India, uh, because of the pollution, because the, of the authoritarian culture. You don't have a voice. You don't have a say. You have to call everybody sir and madam there is no uh, the problem in respecting people but india has a very deep rooted authoritarian and hierarchical culture which i think krishna Murthy was try to uproot but it is so difficult it's like as if ingrained in our dna to to maintain this uh, authoritarian and and hierarchical uh, system so i, I was very uh, frustrated and disgusted with it and i i, I was feeling that while i found people uh, who were friends, like amazing friends, and some amazing teachers, largely it was very difficult for me to be independent and to say what I want to say. And that I would say is an amazing quality of, of the West, that it does give you the space to be yourself and to say what you want to say. Although there are extremes in that too, but I won't go in, in, in discussion in, in, in this context. So through my PhD program, and the reception of uh, my ideas, I felt quite secure or uh, 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 quite contented that now what I'm saying is being heard. People are liking what I'm saying. So I'm in a good spot. Krishna Bhutti calls it psychological security, right? You're feeling that you're secure, which is always a means of suppressing your insecurity because no amount of money, no amount of recognition, no amount of respect, no amount of uh, gratification can actually make you feel secure. You're always secure. You may feel that you are feeling secure because other people look at you and say, yeah, we like you or we appreciate what you have or we uh, recognize what you have. And through that, through their uh, appraisal, you begin to appraise yourself thinking that you are secure. But when I met Ashutosh and uh, engaged in intense dialogues with him, through those dialogues, it became very clear to me that in actuality, I am, even through the work of Krishnamurti and through what I am doing, basically it's a movement of security. I have understanding I am inquiring, I am exploring, I am able to convey to the folks what I am trying to convey. But deep down, is it the same movement of finding security? It became very clear to me through, through, the, through those dialogues. And uh, Ashutosh and I continued to have those dialogues uh, for years, very intensely, and continue to still have them, not as frequently though as, uh, as uh, they happened before, but they happen when there is a need. So those of you who don't know Ashutosh uh, Kalsi, uh, I would say he is one of the very few people uh, who I have met who has real, original, authentic insights. Not only into what Krishnamurti is saying, but his own insights. And that's walking on Krishnamurti's path, pathless path, if I can say. 
that through krishna murti if you are reading him right if you are experimenting with his work rightly your own intelligence should awaken and then you should begin discovering your own insights if you continue to repeat krishna murti's words if you continue to have dialogues only what krishna murti is saying in the same framework in the same circle in the same limitation you haven't got what krishna murti is saying and it made made very clear to me from ashutosh that actually it is possible for someone to just not repeat krishna murti or buddha or any other teacher or praise them but actually discover your own insights it's it's absolutely possible and uh that continued so but when i think uh, now i reflect back i'm i'm trying to connect the dots uh, it's it's very hard to go into the past and tell exactly what happened it's always a story it's always a narration and it's always partially true it's not always 100% true so the partial truth that is coming to my mind that through those deeper discussions and realizing that the movement of my life is the movement of seeking security of course the mind gets completely shattered and it doesn't know what to do then it it kinds of become in a paralytic state uh in that you become uh a, you, you go into a kind of a crisis so i don't know what is the right action what should i do should i work should i not work should i leave should i publish should i not publish should i earn money should i not earn money what to do so all those questions starting uh circling in my mind intensely and that kind of led to an inaction outwardly i remember very clearly that there used to be a time so i started learning music in that time too but i'll, I'll come to that in a little bit that a harmonium is sitting in my in the center of my living room and i am sitting on a couch and i am saying gosh i don't have the energy to move this instrument to the side so that i can clearly walk into the room so you can see the the amount of inaction that pervaded me can't move cannot do anything don't want to do anything um when i would go uh, for walks in the park that's the only thing i would say i liked in that time is go- going for walks in the park and each step was so heavy i i i'm, I'm recalling it distinctly now e- even just to leave for the walk i'm sitting on a chair i need to go for a walk but there is no uh desire to act to get up and go and when i'm when i'm walking in the park each step is heavy each step seems like oh god but but being in nature was the only thing that i i felt relieved me uh, it it kind of uh, created some space within me now this experience that i was having was quite internal so externally it was not that uh, my life was completely Uh, in a disorder that i wasn't able to go to the university or to the university to, to teach or to engage with people outwardly it was not possible for people to see what it was going what was going on inwardly because i think i was very intensely aware of my internal uh, mechanism but others people were not in fact what i was noticing the more intensely i was looking within myself i was able to do the same with other people i was able to look into what's happening inside of them not uh, not reading their minds or anything but actually sense and feel what they're going through what they're feeling uh, what kind of thinking process is going behind um, uh, b- b- behind their activity uh, in 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 relation to me that uh, kind of internal crisis in action went for a while and in that uh, in that space i discovered uh, my interest for music i have always been interested in music always wanted to learn music never had the opportunity or the chance because of the financial limitations of my family and and the time limitations later on 
So when I came to uh, University of British Columbia, I think I would sing before too. I have talked about my journey with music in some other context, so I just won't go in detail. But just in relation to this uh, inaction and the crisis, um, music as the inquiry was deepening, the music was coming out on its own naturally. So I would sing whole day, like uh, practically whole day, continue to sing something. And when I came to, to the city where I'm currently in Halifax, I was staying with a friend of mine and uh, uh, I, would, I, I asked him, I hope it's not bothering you because I just keep feel like singing. And he said, no, no, it's good, but I think you should also learn singing. I said, well, yeah, maybe I should think about that. And I was very lucky to find a Indian classical music teacher in Halifax. You know, Halifax is a very small city. Indian population has exploded here uh, after the pandemic. A lot of Indian people and Indian restaurants and all that. But before that, very few Indians. And to find a teacher of Indian classical music was, uh, was quite, a, quite a thing here. So I began my journey with Indian classical music and, and like being in nature, music became a way of expressing my uh, innermost crisis, my innermost thinking or, or, or my, my innermost feelings. And you know, Krishnamurti talks about originality, independence, uh, freedom, all that I brought to music. I brought my inquiry to music. So I did not learn Indian classical music or Indian music in the way it is taught. In a strict Guru Shishya Parampara where Guru is the ultimate authority and student has to follow. Because of the uh, intensity of my own inquiry and love for music, I learned a lot of music myself. And actually I challenged my teachers a lot. I, I, I was kind of a sore in their eyes because I asked so many questions and the only answer was, you are not ready for that. And I said, no, I'm ready. You just, because if the question is ready, I'm ready for the answer. You give me the answer. Even if I don't understand it, it's okay. But you give me the answer and then I will continue to explore it. Uh, but that's another story. The, the, the complexity of Indian, Indian system, I touched upon it, the hierarchy and the authority and all that. So through that, what happened is very unique that I started writing poetry spontaneously and started composing music uh, uh, the, uh, spontaneously. And that is a very shock to most people, uh, especially people in India, because you have just started learning. You have been in the class for three months. The class only meets, meets weekly. You are older. How can you think about composing music? But the composition was happening naturally. It was not something that I had a control over. So in that phase, uh, I wrote a number of, and you know, the surprising thing, I wrote devotional songs. And that, that was so shocking to me because here I'm criticizing everything, outer structures, the belief in God and everything, but the songs were very devotional. So um, through that, what I realized that devotion is a feeling. A lot of people are devoted to Krishna Murti, but they would be very uh, afraid to say that. Devotion is a feeling. Uh, it's a different thing to be devoted to a particular God, religion, organization, and then killing other people because of that. But to have devotions within you to nature, uh, to, to a teacher who has ignited inquiry in you, I think the, the devotion is very uh, significant feeling that we should have within ourselves. We have lost because of being so head-centered and cognition-centered, we have lost that uh, the, the quality of devotion. So uh, I wanted to read uh, a couple of uh, my uh, poems with you. They are in Hindi and English as well. I think Meena is probably the only person who wouldn't follow Hindi. Uh, is that correct, Meena? Unmute, unmute yourself, unmute. Yes, yes. I can't follow Hindi, but I can see your soul, your heart, your being. So it doesn't without 500 words. I don't mind. If you don't, I, 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 I can I will, see that here. I, I, I will translate it. I will do it in both languages. If they, they are short. Uh, the reason I am uh, reading them to you, you will see Krishnamurti reflected in these, uh, th these poems. First one is actually 
a, a, a kind of a ghazal. So I'll read it in Hindi first and then uh, uh, share its translation in English. Its title is uh, Nafrat Ki Andhiyan, Clouds of Hatred. Nafrat Ki Andhiyon Ka Kyo Dilo Pe Chaya Saya Is Ranj Dushmani Se Kya Kisi Ne Kuch Hai Paya Dil Ho Gaye Hai Patthar Aur Pyaar Kho Gaya Hai Aankhon Me Sab Ki Jaisay Insaan So Gaya Hai Jab Kho Diya Khudi Ko सब पाके भी क्या पाया जो सुकून नहीं है दिल में तब हाथ में क्या आया गर झांके अपने दिल में और ढूंढे अपनी रूह को तो पाएंगे उसी को जो जग में है समाया आई रीड इट इन इंग्लिश नाउ द क्लाउड्स ऑफ हेट्रेड व्हाई हैव द क्लाउड्स ऑफ हेट्रेड ओवरटेकन आवर हार्ट्स हैज एनीवन एवर फाउंड peace in conflict animosity or wars we have turned the skies the lands the waters into our battleground our destructive tendencies have caused chaos in all spheres around our hearts seem to have become insensitive like stones and the delicate love seems to have disappeared in our woes what will we be left with if we lose our hearts and souls what could be worth achieving if we lose our true roles were we to look were we to take a deep look within and find our being we would discover that which permeates everything and every being so i need to thank my wife for helping me translate these uh, the, these poems as well she is in the in 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 the uh, in in this call as well and she was also one of the persons who i met during my uh, musical journey we met actually in the musical class she is also very musical uh, uh, may, maybe we'll share our music with you sometime if we are in indore the next one is uh, i am mother earth mai dhara hu mai dhara hu kuch dhyan karo मैं मां हूं कुछ मान करो फूली फूली सी हैं सांसें मेरी जल रहा है चमन ख्याल करो जंगलों को तुम मिटाते हो सारे जीवों को तुम सताते हो कहर ऐसा क्यों तुम मचाते हो जाग जाओ वरना पछताओगे मां जली तुम भी जल जाओगे अब संभालो मुझे तुम प्यार करो आई एम मदर अर्थ आई एम द फाउंडेशन ऑफ योर एग्जिस्टेंस आई एम ब्रेथलेस द होल ऑफ मी इज ऑन फायर प्लीज बी अवेयर पे अटेंशन डोंट बी केयरलेस डोंट बी कोल्ड यू हैव बीन डिस्ट्रॉइंग माय फॉरेस्ट callously and increasing global heat you have been torturing animals and birds mercilessly killing them for their meat why so much destruction why so little compassion wake up wake up or your actions will bring about an irreversible mess up could you be safe do ponder if your mother is in peril please be aware take care be loving and be fair love the trees the waters the skies and animals i am mother earth the foundation of your existence so as you can see it's not a krishna murti style at all uh, but it's krishna murti's thoughts uh, why when i was writing these uh, these uh, poems and thoughts uh, i wasn't thinking about krishna murti or anything they just came uh, they it, it's i would i i used to call it creative explosion they exploded the poetry and the music so if there is a time i have some recorded music that i can share with you um, but i we may not have time i i can share it in in other ways so uh, professionally 
while i was not interested in publications and writing because you know in the west it's publish or perish i said okay i will perish because i can't do anything i just can't do anything at the moment so no matter what i try i just can't do anything although later on uh, when my energies came back when my uh, sense of strength came back i was able to write i was able to publish not for the sake of publication some for the sake of publication but mostly because i wanted to talk about these things in the context of my teaching i employed krishnamurti quite a bit i had krishnamurti in my holistic education classes in my curriculum studies classes in my philosophy of education classes um, uh, believe it or not in some of my courses we primarily focused on krishnamurti and i was uh, very uh, lucky to to have been able to do that because the syllabus is to be determined by me and i uh, had krishnamurti as uh, as one of the central readings so they read uh dialogues b- between krishnamurti shineberg and david bohm whole uh, a holy uh, a wholeness of life uh, dialogue between De- uh, krishnamurti and anderson a wholly different way of living uh, first and the last freedom education and the significance of life um, uh, krishnamurti on education uh, education and the significance of life and that was very life giving to me because students expressed a lot of interest in these ideas and 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 these and krishna murti's perceptions although a lot of them also think uh, krishna murti sounded pessimistic to them and uh, and were challenged because krishna murti was uh, like very critical of the organized religion so it was questioning their faith but overall majority of them uh, sh- uh, express such interest in krishna murti you know when i'm when i'm speaking with krishna murti people uh, probably they don't show that much uh, expression and joy because they already know that they they already uh, know krishna murti but these students they were really hungry for this kind of an engagement and the way i was engaging with them is not uh, presenting krishna murti as an authoritative teacher but i was speaking more from my own experience and my more exploration my own understanding of krishna murti and helping them develop their own um, so uh, i i would say it was very well taken and through my pedagogical approaches through my engagement with students uh uh and you know the the one activity that i did in the beginning of this uh the the, the session uh, a meditation i developed a lot of reflective and meditative activities i learned from others but i also developed a lot of them on my own uh, which i can't do because we don't have time like writing your reflections writing your fears uh writing the in the, the 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 conditioning influences that influence the way you think and students really appreciated reading uh, krishna murti's writing and the writing of other uh, educators and actually experientially meditatively and reflectively understanding those ideas not just understanding in the head but actually understanding so i would also take them for walks into the nature and ask them to observe and listen to what is happening and so on and so on uh, based on these engagements i developed uh, an idea called uh, teaching as meditative inquiry i have uh, written a lot about it uh, and uh, you know i can share my website so you can find all of these uh, the pieces for free if you want they are they are available and the links are available and uh, i found that student uh, took a lot of interest in the way i was uh, articulating the idea of meditative inquiry so i'm quite I- influenced and inspired by krishna murti but as i said i also love uh, kabir i've also learned a lot from osho despite all the controversies and the criticisms around it which i acknowledge a lot of problematic things have happened but i cannot deny my own experience of exploring his work and learning from it i don't see any falsity i i never felt oh that was a waste of time or i was misguided i personally never felt that um the work of gurjiev and ospensky i'm not sure if you are aware of it or not there is a tre- tremendously important book called in search of uh, miraculous uh, so th- i tried to integrate what i learned uh, through my teachers through my own exploration into an approach which i call meditative inquiry 
Um, I don't have the time, I think, but I will briefly describe their uh, the seven principles that I have developed and uh, engage my students and colleagues with. Number one, questioning deeply about everything without fear. Critiquing social injustices, oppression and discrimination. Often we see uh, if we are interested in Krishnamurti or spirituality that it's only about us. But uh, if we see Krishnamurti's work, it was all always about the disorder in the society, not only just disorder within, but the disorder in the society. Celebrating the freedom to think, to observe, to express and to be. Cultivating awareness of the way one thinks, feels and acts. Partaking and rejoicing in the creative flow of life. Understanding relationships and connecting with people and nature deeply. Participating in dialogue with oneself and others honestly and authentically. I have been uh, organizing quite a few of dialogues, conferences, seminars to educate people about uh, Krishnamurti's work, as uh, Dubeji mentioned in his introduction, I organized a conference of Krishna, on Krishnamurti with my wife, Neha Acharya, and it's available on YouTube if anybody is interesting. And recently, I also organized uh, a, a conference on a book I edited on the concept of meditative inquiry. So I have been uh, quite engaged. Now, there are still periods in which I go in isolation and don't engage too much. But I feel that I have the energy and the strength and the motivate to engage people around these ideas and to emphasize the significance of uh, living a deeply aware, uh, a, a, a deeply uh, uh, committed and, 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 and a life uh, that, that has the quality of intensity, quality of possibility, quality of passion. Of creativity in it and uh, that's why I was very happy when I was uh, uh, asked to give this presentation and talk and uh, I, I enjoyed uh, tremendously sharing my thoughts I, I hope it was enjoyable for you and I think it's time for questions folks are already raising their hands so I'm here to respond to your question and I'm sorry if I took longer I thought I would be finished in 20 minutes and then rest would be for discussion, but intensity took over. So, thank you, thank you, Professor Shinikumar. I think it was a very interesting discourse and such a wonderful journey. I have no words to say. I am really speechless. Thank you, thanks a lot. We'll, thank we you. have we have hardly about uh, thirteen minutes, so I'll request people to be very very brief. <laughs> we start with Shakti ji, then go to Dinesh Bagmare, Pradeep Parma, Rajendran. Ansaji and Harshad Parik. Yes, Shakti ji and Harshad Parik first. Shakti ji, please go ahead. Unmute yourself. Yes, sir. My voice is reaching, sir. Yes. Yeah. I just uh, wanted to ask them that, uh, you know, there is this mindfulness and Krishnamurti. Uh, do you think that they they meet these circles, they meet somewhere because Krishnamurti talks about a quality of listening, quality of watching, being aware when one is doing something. So do you think it's part of Krishnamurti discourse? Thanks. That's an amazing question. And, and I wish I had, uh, I had, I had uh, a lot of time to elaborate on it, but I'll very briefly discuss. Uh, Mindfulness is mindfulness is rooted in in Buddhist tradition, and I think Buddha's primary focus was also awareness, as Krishna Murti's was. But you know, about around all people, around all traditions, uh, a, a layer of uh, um, rigidity and regimentation developed. That developed around Buddha, and I'm sure it will develop around Krishna Murti too. That's one thing. The other thing is mindfulness doesn't have as much depth and intensity about the, the, the inner world of human being. What's happening in uh, mindfulness, it may appear similar to Krishnamurti. It is similar to Krishnamurti, but there is a danger of suppressing your thoughts and emotions because mindfulness says focus on your breath, focus on your 
navel right focus concentration is very central to mindfulness and that's why it is being co-opted by corporations right okay if being mindful makes you less stressed and more efficient we are all good for it we will give a little bit of time to our employee because ultimately they will produce better so mindfulness has a great danger because it is technique centered it prioritizes techniques in an instrumental fashion to deal with the problem of the modern day society so mindfulness without fully understanding krishna murti is dangerous can be dangerous it has been dangerous i Thank i you. hope it it responds to some extent but Thank in its so it in its soul if you see mindful yeah. be aware i think it's it's very close to what krishna murti is saying thank you thank you yes uh, dr harshad parik <coughs> yes are you able to hear my voice yes yeah uh, thank you dr mm-hmm. Ash- ashwani kumar uh, you spoke very fluently and you had no difficulty because you are in the academic world mm-hmm. so everything was coming very fluently and uh, you said a lot of thing and uh, i also like kabir and krishnamurti and uh, there was one uh, uh, theosophist called rohit mehta he used to travel with his wife all over the world and his wife will sing kabir's bhajan and uh, rohit mehta will give a talk on kabir and krishnamurti and the book is published and it's very interesting book to read and it's, it's, uh, about... it's on it's on my list to read it's, it's okay. i know about it's on my list but i haven't had the chance but at some point yeah. yes it, it's a very good book and the other thing i like to say that when i came to know about krishnamurti by chance i for 7 years i did not discuss no dialogue with anybody but i was reading and looking within and i found that it was very very interesting and some changes begin to happen in my life which um, my friends also notice and uh, another thing i want to say is about uh, krishnamurti somebody asked krishnamurti that your schools why it is only for rich people and krishnamurti said we are not talking about rich people and poor people we are talking about the human mind and the human mind works in a very similar way whether they are rich or poor so uh, i think that is the way uh, the human mind uh, krishnamurti is trying to touch and maybe the poor people um, may not get the opportunity to study in krishnamurti schools but there are some scholarships are there and another thing i like is about music and uh, nature because i also feel very happy to just walk around and the music because music uh, is kind of a devotional uh, and very artistic so along with krishnamurti it is good to have uh, a different not just being intellectual and talking all all the time but uh, really relaxing enjoying nature being quiet silent so and i am very happy that you are bringing uh, interest in krishnamurti in young people in the university and if they are really getting something then it is a very good work you are doing thank you very much thank you thank you Yeah, thank you for thank all you. of your comments uh, just one point i think uh, mm-hmm. uh, what's hap- what happened in the field of education that the government controls education right if the government lets schools to be independent that the government can fund the schools and school can run the way they want to that's why all the alternative educational institutions including uh, krishna murti schools they are uh, they have to be private because the government doesn't want to fund it but if the government funds it then there would be so many educational experiments but the people are not interested in that right they want to control education yes yes that is true yes dinesh ji we can take are you able to listen to me sir yes yes, yes. we have 6 minutes so please be brief yeah i am having two questions for you 
in your personal inquiry what did you find the meaning of self understanding or self inquiry this is number 1 number 2 what did you find the core or essence in the krishna murti's teaching is it awareness or is it uh, other the other dimensions hmm well i think i think i i have uh, I, i have discussed uh, that to to some extent but i can i can uh, maybe share a little bit more so when when anybody looks within themselves they find a lot of things uh some patterns uh some uh, uh rigidities a lot of influences uh some the, the feelings that they continuously have so to me self understanding has been a process of understanding myself so um, uh, if i have a fear where is that fear coming from not only understanding it only intellectually but staying with the feeling of fear which is very difficult because you want to run away from that feeling you 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 don't want to so it's very uh, easy to talk about intellectually to stay with fear and be with fear but when fear actually happens to you or when you feel jealous to be with that is very difficult you have to be really interested in that and you have to be very delicate about it that you don't suppress it that you don't try to run away from it that you let it be and it shakes your complete being but it also makes you extremely intelligent so self awareness or self understanding for me is to study yourself to learn about yourself but not just intellectually but existentially because through that understanding your brain your mind becomes very intelligent and it's able to deal with situations and complexities much more intelligently than it it it, it generally is able to if it is uh, dealing with them through the process of intellectual analysis and uh, i i would say to me the central focus of krishna murti's work for, to my understanding is awareness but in the hope that awareness will bring about deeper personal and social transformation but personal and social transformation can become ideals and ideologies it's primarily the awareness to 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 stay with what is uh, uh, so uh, dubey ji a thought was coming to me that uh, you that there is very little time for question answer i would be happy to appear at some point and engage with folks questions if you want something like that but i am also happy to just finish it here if we have 3 minutes uh we i think sushil ji can we extend it for 10 more minutes uh, no uh, no sorry oh, i please. can't uh, unfortunately i can't extend it uh, maybe oh, i can okay. extend it for 10 minutes i can extend it yes okay yeah, that's, and, uh, that's that's what we are asking you sir yeah. 10 okay. minutes only yeah. okay Professor perfect Kumar, we'll, we'll we'll have it in future also so that uh we can continue with this dialogue for a little more time for, for sure I, yeah, that that's yeah. what i was thinking that the folks who were here uh mm. i can engage in a much more in depth way with their question at that time okay okay so we'll we'll finish it off with one question more i think we'll take varma ji's question close sure. it and then maybe have another session with you where we would like to hear a music also because we have heard the poetry we would like to have the music as well yes varma ji sure. the last last question yes thank you am i audible sir yes thank you ashwini thank you very much okay. i find a new friend listening to you education in real sense demands a very close association with nature now nature and life both are in danger with fast changing technology and structuring of education through virtual realities present in the entire and this presents an entirely different paradigm so this may be called as concretization of education even classical music you see a great role of nature and seasons educating us non verbally thank you very much thank, thank you for you. your comment i can't agree more i cannot agree more thank you thank you thank you so much thank you thank you mr varma and uh, thank you ashwini ji for being with us it was a very interesting talk and uh, 
I think uh, there will be many, many more questions about your journey, Rokesh teachings. So we'll have another long session and then we can have lots of questions. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks a lot. Good night. Sir, you have to declare the topic for the next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday we have, I don't remember who is the speaker next Sunday. Gopalan, Mr. sir. Okay, so I, sir, Mr. S. Gopalan, who is, uh, uh, he was associated with the Valley School Bangalore, he'll be talking to us. And uh, I don't remember the theme of his talk, but it will be at 11 a.m. next Sunday. So please join us if you're free. Uh, and as usual, I think Gopalan's lectures are very interesting. So I'm, I'm sure you'll be happy to hear it. Thank you. And next, to ne next to next Sunday is the holy day. Everybody yes. is interested in that. That's a new year date, 1st January. So yeah, 1st January will not have any holiday also. Yes. Special preparation for holiday. <laughs> okay. So I will we, we'll wish the new year next next Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. On 8th, we will have Rajan Chandi. Okay. Thank you. Thank New you. Year. All right, oh, Dubey Ji. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Thank no you, words. everyone. And we will call you soon, sir. Okay. Bye-bye.